Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about quadratic equations and more specifically we're going to be talking about the discriminant of a quadratic equation. So what is the discriminant? The discriminant comes from the quadratic formula which we can see here. The discriminant of the quadratic formula is the part or the, the expression underneath the third. So a discriminant of a function is equal to b squared subtract 4ac. Now, what we're going to be talking about today is what the hell a discriminant tells us. Now, we can use the quadratic formula for determining what um, values x takes that solves the equation of a quadratic in general form. Now, the discriminant in this quadratic equation, or in this quad, yeah, quadratic formula, that tells us how many solutions it's going to have. For example, if b squared minus 4ac is positive, the square root of it, it will, will still be positive, and so the function will have two solutions, i.e. negative b plus whatever this number is, and negative b minus whatever this number is. Now, if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, the square root of 0 will still be 0, and therefore the entire function you'll have b plus 0 and b minus 0, which will still will be the same number, and we'll have one solution. Now, if b squared minus 4ac is negative, you cannot take the square root of a negative number and expect a real solution. So you, this, the equation will have no real solutions. So let's just go through those all again and just write out a few notes. So these are concerning the solutions of a quadratic equation. So number one, if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, the equation will have two solutions. Now these are two real solutions. All of these mean real solutions. So you can put this in for all of the notes that I'm going to write. This is real solutions. So next point, if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, we're only going to have one real solution. Now, finally, if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, or it's a negative number, we're going to have no real solutions. Great. So those are the three different, I guess, permutations of the outcomes of the discriminant and what each of the outcomes tells us. So let's apply, get straight into applying the discriminant to a function. So I don't know, what we could do is we could write down our own function. Let's say we've got y is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 9. Who knows? Now, this is our quadratic equation. If you're just starting out, you might want to write down what all of your values are. So we've got a equals 1, b is equal to positive 6, and c is equal to negative 9. Now in these situations using the quadratic formula and the discriminant, the sign on each of these values a, b, and c is crucial. It's important that you put it down. So don't be lazy, just put it down. It's Pretty, pretty simple to do. So, 
Let's calculate our discriminant for this function. So we've got b squared minus 4ac is going to be equal to b is 6 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 9. So we have 6 squared is 36 minus, we've got 4, negative 4 times negative 9, so we have positive 36. So we're going to make that into a positive, and that's going to be 36. So 36 plus 36 is 72. So what we can say from this then is we can write therefore y is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 9 will have 2 real solutions. Okay, so that's an incredibly basic application of the discriminant, but if you're just starting out with this or you're doing a pre-calculus course, you'll be asked to do questions like this in tests, so you know it's, it's always wise to do one or two of them. So let's go to a little bit more nuanced question, which we have here. Find all values of a such that ax squared plus 3x plus 5 equals 0 has two real solutions. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to break the question down and figure out what it's, it's actually asking us. So we have an equation that has to have two real solutions. So if it's got two real solutions, that means that b squared minus 4ac has to be greater than 0. So that's what that bit means. So find all values of a. So here, change color. Here, they're probably going to be looking for some kind of yeah, range. It's not going to be just integers. We're, look, we're going to be looking for like a is greater than such and such. a is greater than or less than, you know, a particular value. Let's just call it x. Who knows? Cool. So, let's work out what information we've been given now. So, we have a is equal to a, b is equal to 3, and c is equal to 5. So, what we've got here is we're going to input our values into the discriminant. So, we've got b squared minus 4ac is equal to 3 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is 5. Now, and that has got to be greater than 0. So, let's multiply out all of our brackets and basically just simplify this a bit. has got to be greater than 0. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we, I would move the 9 across. Basically what we're trying to do from here is solve for a. So we'll move the 9 across and we're left with negative 20a has got to be greater than negative 9 then we can divide both sides by negative 20. And what you'll find is the negatives cancel out, and on this side the 20s cancel out, and on just on this side the negatives cancel out. And what happens is because we're dividing it by a negative number, the quality 
flips. So what we're left with is A has got to be less than 9 over 20. Great. And that's equal to, so if you were wanting to write this as a decimal, I believe it's going to be A has got to be less than 0 0.5. Five. Cool. So those are our solutions. If we wanted to, if your teacher was really sort of anal about their um, notation, you'd, you'd probably want to write it as some sort of domain. So you could say the values that x could take would be a, such that a is an element of the real numbers and a has got to be less than 0 0.45. And if you write this, then I'm sure that the teacher will have no excuses but to give you full marks. So I hope that sort of brief description of what the discriminant is and how it can be applied to two random questions. We had one quite simple one here and one a little bit more complicated up the top here. So I hope these helped in your understanding of the discriminant. If you don't understand or you want a little bit more explanation into certain parts of this, shoot me a message or something and I'll be happy to answer it for you. Thanks. Catch you later.